The Little Mermaid swam towards the shore faster than she'd ever swum before. She was so excited. But then she started to think about everything that was at stake. What if she and the prince didn't get along? Oh no, she hadn't thought of that. What if the plan backfires and she gets turned into a sea urchin never to see Dolphin her family ever again? But the Little Mermaid soon forgot her worries because she had arrived at the beach. She had two fully functioning, not at all tentacly feet. Ow, 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 owie, ow, 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 ugh, ugh. Sea urchin, told you they were the worst. But at least I have my very own feet. <laughs> Let the dancing begin. Well, as soon as my foot stops stinging, darn urchin. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is story time. Today we're reading The Little Mermaid. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Very little. See, there she is. Anyway, the Little Mermaid was not just a mermaid, she was also a princess, daughter of the mighty sea king. And she had five older sisters, also princesses. One of the Little Mermaid's favorite things to do was listen to her sister's stories about the world beyond the water. See, whenever one of the princesses turned 18, she was allowed to go to the surface of the ocean. There, she could see the sky, and the birds, and the clouds. And if they were extra lucky, they might even see a ship with humans on board. Sometimes, though, the Little Mermaid got the sense that her sisters were just making stuff up. Human people have eight legs. They kind of look like octopuses. <laughs> that was so funny. I think it's octopi. Whatever. And some humans have a horn on their head, like a narwhal. No way! You'll see. Land people have eyes all over their bodies, so they can see everything at once. Nuh-uh! Yeah, they do! Blech! I don't believe it. I think humans are beautiful. I guess they are, if you like lots of eyes and horns and stuff. When the Little Mermaid was almost 100% sure they were fibbing, she would go to her dad. Dad, is it true that human people have eight legs and a narwhal horn and lots of eyes and that they wrestle sharks and eat whale blubber for dessert? The only thing you should know about people is that they can be dangerous and you should never speak to one. Ugh, when am I going to get my chance to see the humans? I feel like I'll never turn 18. Uh-oh, she better watch out. But of course she did grow up. See, there she is, right before her 18th birthday. Hi, <laughs> let me tell you about life as a sea princess. We lived in a palace made of shells and pieces of treasure from sunken ships. At night, each princess slept in a bed of beautiful sea flowers. Shh. And you've heard of a school of fish, right? That's where we studied and learned. Actually, we did lots of things that human girls do, just a little differently. We played sports. Wow, this is so fun. We went to the movies. Only problem, popcorn gets soggy underwater. We acted in plays. To swim or not to swim? That is the question. You should have seen me in South Pacific. The ocean time said I was a star. Imagine, me a starfish. <laughs> so basically, I was just a regular girl. Oh, except my best friend was a dolphin. <laughs> Hi there. I guess you humans might not think that's too regular. Dolphin and I would swim around and get into all kinds of adventures. <laughs> like one time, we swam way super deep, down into the part of the ocean that's so dark. You can't see your own tail. And then all of a sudden, we saw a glowing blob floating towards us. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Ah, giant bioluminescent marine worm with fangs, creepy. Bioluminescent means it glows. Yeah, obviously, let's get out of here. And then another time, we hitched a ride with a shark. They can swim real fast. And they have big, scary teeth. But they can't turn their heads, so they're like, guys, what's back there? I don't know, man. I don't see nothing. The craziest adventure was when we sneaked into the sea witch's house. She lived in a giant, sunken pirate ship. Super creepy, but also super cool. <laughs> the sea witch had gone out to get a carton of whale milk for her coffee. We swam inside and... Wow! Cool! <laughs> we were playing with a sword. Well, I was. <laughs> Dolph can't hold a sword. No hands! And I was just about to defeat the pretend pirate ghost that I was battling when... 
la 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 Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Ah! Care to tell me what you're doing in my house? Nothing. Yeah, we took a wrong turn. Yeah, I mean, we don't even like it here. I mean, <laughs> that's not what I mean. I mean, I'm, uh, see ya. Not so fast. Are you the daughter of the king? Um, yeah. I saw you on TV. You sang the Oceanic Anthem before the big squid dash in the orca race last year. Oh, down in the sea, by the bronzer, the light, or the sea sponge we. Oh, I just love your voice. Here, have some tea. Oh, why, thank you. Excuse me. <laughs> yes, a beautiful voice. You wouldn't want to trade it, would you? <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. My voice? Yes. I would give you something wonderful in return. Anything you wished. We should really get going. Yes, I hate to be rude, but no thanks. Okay, we are never going back there. Definitely not. See you tomorrow at my place? Not if I see you first. Fun fact, dolphins have very good eyesight. It's true. And really good hearing. Yep. And they're nosy. Bottle nosy. Heard that too, and it wasn't very clever. Oh, well, I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> he has a bottle nose, get it? Anyway, you may be wondering what was happening the next day. Nothing major, just my 18th birthday. <laughs> we were having a huge party, and everyone was there. All my friends, and my sisters, and my mom and dad. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> there was a pinata. Tons of balloons, and a pin the tail on the tiger shark. Hey, cut that out. And of course, we had a huge cake. <laughs> no candles though, because you know, water. <laughs> but I still made a wish. I wish that when I swim to the top of the ocean and look out, that I'll see a real live human prince. A handsome one, not like what my crazy sisters keep telling me about. Like, I hope he only has two eyes. <laughs> like the handsome princes I've seen in my fairy tale books. I want to see him dance and ride a bike and play soccer. Oh, and I'd also like to dance and ride a bike and play soccer. That sounds cool. Hey, maybe I want to be a human, just for a little while. What would you do if you were there? Ahem. <clears throat> Oh, sorry, <laughs> and I'm done. What do you wish for? I can't tell you that, but I will tell you that first thing tomorrow morning, we're going to the top of the ocean. I do that every morning. It's how I breathe. Oh, <laughs> I always forget that you're an air breather. <laughs> hey, have you ever seen a person? Not up close. What do you want to see a human for? No reason. The Little Mermaid was so excited about her first trip to the surface of the ocean that she could barely sleep. She tossed and turned in her bed all night. Finally, she drifted off to sleep and dreamed of having human feet. Hello, fellow human people. Thank you for coming to my dance recital. <laughs> now watch me dance with my brand new feet. Wow, that is so cool. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, eyeball guy, yuck. But the prince was really handsome. <sighs> the next morning, the little mermaid and Dolph swam to the top of the ocean where the water meets the sky. The last one there is a rotten turtle egg. Look, a ship. The prince, it's him. The who, what? Let's go! When the Little Mermaid and Dolph got to the surface, they looked out and saw a magnificent ship, definitely fit for a prince! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on! Chapter three, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! There's gotta be a prince on that ship, I just know it! What prince? That prince. What a dream boat. It is a nice boat, I guess. No, he's the dream boat. <laughs> 
That means he's a total cutie pie. I don't like pie. Humans love pie. Gosh, you don't know anything about people, do you, Dolph? I know that that one is looking right at us. What? Ah! I can't let the prince see me like this. Like what? As a mermaid. But you are a mermaid. Yeah, and he's a human, Dolph. Never in any of the hundreds of fairy tales that I've read have I ever heard of a human falling in love with a mermaid. Love? Already? Sheesh. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm getting a little carried away, but he looks just like a storybook prince. Not at all like my sisters described. They said humans have horns and eight legs and a hundred eyes, but this human only has two perfectly perfect eyes. Maybe we should go home. I have a better idea. Let's go see what he's doing now. It's his birthday too? O-M-G whiz. We are so meant to be. Look, he's about to blow out his candles. Real candles, Dolph. Oh, well, I wonder what his wish is going to be. Maybe it's to meet a mermaid. <laughs> I wish that he would wish to meet a cool mermaid. Me, obviously. <laughs> and fall in love. And then, like magic, I turn into a human with feet. <laughs> we could go on long walks on the beach, or do a three-legged race, or get matching patties, go shoe shopping, and of course, dance. We would probably be the best dancers in the whole world. Aw, that is so nice. Are you done? I'm getting hungry. We've been here forever. Hold your seahorses just a little longer. Dolph, they are dancing. <gasps> That's dancing? It looks like they got shocked by an electric eel. It's beautiful. Oh, look at all the colors. It's so pretty. <laughs> what is it? I think they're fireworks. I've, I've heard of them, but I never knew they were so cool. Look, that one looks like a smiley face. <laughs> cool. Wow, this is so fun. The two watched until the fireworks were over and all the people had gone down into the boat's cabin. Okay, show's over. Let's go home. Wait, look! Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I may. I wish I might. Have the wish I wish tonight. Didn't he already make a wish on his birthday candles? Dolph, be quiet! I wish I didn't have to get married. At least, not to any of the princesses around here. I just want to meet someone who gets me. I get you! Someone who likes the things I like. Someone I can talk to. Someone down to earth who likes to take long walks and dance. I'm here! It's me! Be mine! Huh? <laughs> Whoa! I'll save you! What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. We have to save the prince. I'm on it. We'll never be able to get him back on the ship. Let's carry him to shore. Got him. Who are you? I'm the one you wished for. Uh-oh, here comes a human. We have to go. But... No buts. Let's go. Goodbye, my prince. I'll come back for you. I promise. That prince is so handsome. Sir, are you okay? Where is she? Where's my princess? You fell overboard. You must have hit your head. No, she was here. She saved me. Whatever you say, sir. Back at the sea palace, the little mermaid told her sisters all about her adventure with the prince. No way. I don't believe you. It's true, I saved him. Well, Dolph helped. <laughs> but he looked right into my eyes. And you know what? It's true love. I just know it. Give it up. You're a mermaid. He's a human. Um, never gonna happen. Yeah, go to sleep. That's a good idea, because then I can dream of my prince all night. And she did. The little mermaid dreamt of her prince, but something was off. Ah. Oh no, that's not right. Sea witch. Oh no, no, I'm not a witch. 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 That's it. I'll go to the sea witch. She'll know how to give me human feet. And so the little mermaid went straight to the sea witch. Ah, the king's daughter. What do you want, sweetheart? Um, well, I wanted to ask you, um, about feet. 
You want to ask me about feet? Well, I guess what I really want is to be a human. Really? How interesting. Is it? You know, when you were here last, I offered you a trade. You can have anything you wish for, and I'll have your voice. Can't you do some witch magic? Like, how about I just pay you, and then you turn me into a human, and then you can work up some other spell for a nice voice. So, um, not that your voice isn't already nice. Oh, I love your voice. Yeah, sure. Well, that was weird. And why do you want to be a human so badly? Well, there's this prince, and I saved him from drowning. Well, Dolph did, but that's besides the point. I think I love him. Oh, the prince, not Dolph. Oh, I love the prince. I don't know, whatever. I mean, it's complicated. Okay, here's what I can do. I'll grant your wish. You'll be a human. Really? But you only have one month. If you can't make the prince fall in love with you in one month, then you'll return to the sea. Not as a mermaid, but as a sea urchin. A sea urchin? And everyone knows sea urchins are the worst. Yeah, they're awful. They hide in the sand and stick you with their stingers. Yeah, terrible. Oh, and I will be needing that voice of yours. But how will I talk to the prince? He needs to hear how funny and charming I am. <laughs> he needs to hear me sing. Oh. And hear my laugh. <laughs> and hear my dolph impression. Hey, I'm dolph. I'm over here. Little mermaid, let's swim. Oh. I guess that one's more of an inside joke, but the point is I need my voice. We can trade. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Trade? Who are you? I'm the girl who saved you. Ah, sea witch. Well, maybe it's more mysterious and enchanting with no voice at all. Very well. Let's review. you. You'll be a human. But if you can't make the prince fall in love with you, then you'll turn into a sea urchin. And I'll have your voice forever. Deal? Deal. Abracadabra. Pleasure doing business with you. What's that? I can't hear you. Oh, your feet? Just swim towards the land. When you emerge from the water, you will have your very own feet. Oh. The Little Mermaid swam towards the shore faster than she'd ever swum before. She was so excited. But then she started to think about everything that was at stake. What if she and the prince didn't get along? Oh no, she hadn't thought of that. What if the plan backfires and she gets turned into a sea urchin never to see Dolph and her family ever again? But the Little Mermaid soon forgot her worries because she had arrived at the beach. She had two fully functioning, not at all tentacly feet. Ow, 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 owie, ow, ow, ow. Ugh. Ugh. Sea urchin, told you they were the worst. But at least I have my very own feet. <laughs> Let the dancing begin. Well, as soon as my foot stops stinging, darn urchins. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Okay, first order of business, shoes. <laughs> I know all about shoes because of the fairy tales I've read. <laughs> Maybe I can get some glass slippers like Cinderella. <gasps> These are perfect. May I help you? Oh, I forgot about the whole no talking thing. Darn sea witch and her weird spells. Don't worry kids, I can still talk to you guys, but just no one in the story can hear me. Ooh, that makes sense. You wanna buy these shoes? Those are a kid size six. Let's find something in your size. Ooh, these are much better. Wait, where are you going? You have to pay for those. You know, with money? Do you have money? Then I'm afraid you'll have to go. I'll buy them for her. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. What happened? Why don't you have any shoes? I think she's saying she fell off the boat. You poor thing. Can you not speak at all? You must have hit your head or something when you fell overboard. I'll take care of you. But Princess Lily, she looks like a common ragamuffin to me. You are very rude. 
And you are coming with me. You'll live in the palace until you're better. Oh, that is so nice. Um, awesome. <laughs> if she's the princess, then she must be related to the prince. Oh. Princess Lily was so nice. She took me to get new clothes. And then it was time to go to the palace. Oh man, was it nice. Don't get me wrong, I love the sea palace, but this place was amazing. For example, they had this thing called an elevator. It's like magic. <laughs> You're on one floor, and then you go in this little box, press a bunch of buttons, and they light up, and then, presto, you appear on another floor. <laughs> After I got tired riding the elevator, the princess and I chilled out by the pool, where I tried to impress her with my water skills. <laughs> Turns out it's a lot harder without a tail. <laughs> that was so funny. Still, it was fun. Could it really be this easy? <laughs> First day as a human, I'm already best buds with the princess. <laughs> and it was only getting better because it was almost dinner time, and that meant I would meet the prince. I was so nervous. Surely the prince would recognize me, and it would be love at first sight, or second sight, whatever. <laughs> but when we went to dinner, it was like he'd never seen me before in his life. Bummer. The princess explained to everyone that she had found me wandering around the town with no shoes, hungry and lost after I'd fallen off a ship passing in the night. She was wrong, obviously, but works for me. <laughs> hey, I fell off a ship yesterday too. Small world. Yeah, he fell overboard at his birthday party. He thinks a mermaid saved him. <laughs> It's true. I can't remember her face, but I'm positive I saw her. How are they ever going to get out of this one? Mermaids aren't real, Jeff. They're just pretend, Jeff. Where does your family live, dear? Mom, I told you, she can't talk. Can she write? Oh, I didn't think of that. Great idea. Uh-oh. What would I tell them? Obviously not the truth. They just said they don't believe in mermaids. I know. Well, what does it say? It's all just nonsensical gibberish, sir. She must have bumped her head and forgotten how to write. I'll call the doctor tomorrow. For now, dinner is served. Ah! I guess she doesn't like fish. She might just be full. She ate a lot of ice cream earlier. Dear Prince Jeff, you're right. Mermaids are real. I know because I am one, and I'm the one who saved you. You may be wondering, why does she have feet if she's a mermaid? Well, I went to the sea witch who cast a spell on me, giving me feet so I could meet you. And that's also why I can't talk. See, she made me trade my voice for the feet. I don't really know why. Witches' curses are usually pretty weird. Anyway, I like you. Do you like me? Circle one. Yes, no, or maybe. Yours truly. a message from the sea witch. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Not a word, no cheating. That's all it said, but what could it mean? Oh no, did it mean I couldn't write to the prince either? No fair. This was gonna be harder than I thought. The next day, the doctor came in to check on me. Uh-huh. Stick out your tongue and say, ah. Oh, right. So you can't say a word, huh? And you don't remember anything? This is clearly a case of head bump induced non rememberiness I recommend lots of rest and ice cream. Ooh, this is so exciting. And you'll stay with us until you're better. Your family must be worried sick. And they were worried. The Sea King and all the Little Mermaid sisters were looking all over for her. Hi, excuse me, your highness. I uh, might know where your daughter is, maybe. You do? Where? Well, she's been very interested in humans the last couple days. And? Um. Speak, Dolphin, speak. I think maybe she found a way to go on land, your majesty, sir. But there's no way she could get onto land. Unless... La 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 Ziddy dee 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 Doo doo ba 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 Yes, who is it? Uh oh! Where's my daughter? Who? 
My daughter! Oh, right, her. She's up there with the humans. She thinks she's in love. <laughs> with a human? We made a deal and the spell's been cast. I can't interfere. Anyway, I'm busy recording my album. I'm calling it Witch's Brew. It's jazz. <laughs> that was hilarious. You have until tonight to bring her home or else. The Sea King was so angry that he threw the Sea Witch in jail. You're making a huge mistake. Then he sent a message to his daughter. Huh? This time it was from my dad, not the stinky Sea Witch with another rule. My dearest daughter, you must come home at once. You do not know the dangers of humans. I've sent my finest trained seal to escort you home. Love, Dad. I missed my dad, but I couldn't leave yet. Things were going really well on land. Plus, there's the whole curse thing. I tried to show the seal that I was safe and he could let my family know that I was doing just fine. <coughs> but I'm not sure he understood. So like I said, things were going really well with the prince and princess. They taught me all kinds of stuff about the human world. Of course, they thought they were just helping me remember. You know, because I fell off a ship and bumped my head. But the best thing I learned was how to dance. That is amazing. The royal ball is coming up and you have to go. It's so much fun. Oh, ignore him. He still misses his imaginary mermaid girlfriend. Hey, Jeff, maybe you can invite the mermaid to the ball. <laughs> You're very good at line dancing. Save a dance for me at the ball? Awesome. He likes me. Well, he doesn't exactly know that it's me he likes, but we're going to dance at the ball. That's something. Jeff, you know that Daddy is going to make you dance with Princess Esmeralda all night? That's who Jeff is supposed to marry. They've been promised to each other for years. Wait, what? But that's not how this is supposed to go. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 7, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The Little Mermaid was very upset. I mean, wouldn't you be if you thought you might turn into a sea urchin? You remember the deal with the sea witch. Well, let me remind you. Flashback time. Let's review. You'll be a human, but if you can't make the prince fall in love with you, then you'll turn into a sea urchin, and I'll have your voice forever. Deal? Deal. How was I supposed to know that Prince Jeff was already getting hitched? What am I gonna do? What would you do if you were there? While the Little Mermaid was busy thinking, her dad, the Sea King, was busy coming up with a plan for her rescue. I'll just swim up there, and no, that won't work. Can't swim on land. Nope. Okay, I'll send all the sea turtles and crabs up there and demand she come home. They can walk. She'll just refuse to come. Wait, I know. I'll send all the seagulls to fly into the palace and pick her up and carry her home. But didn't the sea witch say she has to stay or else she'll turn into a sea urchin? Right, the sea witch. I'll just make a new deal with the sea witch. No, never negotiate with witches. But off they went to make a deal with the evil sea witch. Back on land, the little mermaid had come up with a very good plan. Okay, this is such a good idea, you guys. I'll just act like a mermaid. Then the prince will totally recognize me. Then he'll want to marry me and not this princess Esmeralda. So obvious. OMG, I love it. The Little Mermaid was sure this plan would work, and soon she and Prince Jeff would be in true L-O-V-E. That spells love, by the way. <laughs> Meanwhile, I told you, the spell has been cast. Nothing I can do. What if you could have my palace? Say what now? You send me to land as a human. And if I can't get my daughter back, you win. You get my kingdom. Now that's interesting. Wait, your majesty, the mermaid really, really, really likes the prince. What if she doesn't want to come back with you? Well, you'll have to help me convince her. Me? Uh, and what happens to us if we fail? If you fail, you turn into a jellyfish, and I will have everything. And if we succeed? You won't. <laughs> that is so not cool. But if you do, I'll swim away to another ocean and never set a tentacle in your kingdom again. What's the catch? The catch is you can't tell her why you're there. The only choice is to make her fall out of love with the prince. Do we have a deal? Okay, let's review the pros and cons here. It's a deal. Oy vey. 
It's finally time for the royal ball. Okay, just act like a mermaid. But it turned out that acting like a mermaid was a lot harder than she expected. Apart from her doing swimming dance moves, she was at a total loss. Hear ye, hear ye, please make way for the lovely Princess Esmeralda. Whoa, we have legs, this is cool. I don't like it, these are feet. They're totally weird. They're not so bad. Look, I can jump. Oh, that's kind of neat. Okay, okay, enough nonsense. Let's go find my daughter. Meanwhile, back at the ball, the Little Mermaid had gotten a chance to meet Esmeralda and... Guys, Princess Esmeralda was totally cool. She was funny and pretty and smart and totally a good dancer. She even did this really funny trick where she pretended to find a coin behind my ear. I'm telling you, she was the best. Surely Prince Jeff must be totally head over heels in love with her. But Jeff just stared out at sea, looking for his mermaid. That is so sad. Oh yeah, my plan. He just needs to see me in my natural habitat. Girl overboard. <laughs> All right, I forgot that swimming with human legs is kind of tricky. Help, help, she's drowning. I'll save her. I've got you. Not the romantic rescue I was expecting. When the two made it safely to shore, everyone cheered. Yeah! Yay, great job. You swim like a natural, like a dolphin. Thanks, I'm Princess Esmeralda. Who are you? Uh, I'm Prince uh, Dolphrey. Dolphrey? Yep, Prince Dolphrey. And this is my uncle, the king of Sea Town. Anyway, lovely to meet you, princess. Everyone was very happy to welcome the royal travelers. Everyone except for the Little Mermaid. That is totally Dolph and my dad. Who invited them? What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dolph and the Sea King, I mean Prince Dolphery and the King of Sea Town, had just arrived and everyone was very happy to welcome the new guests to the Royal Ball. The Little Mermaid, of course, was a little suspicious. Right? I mean, why are they here? To take me back to sea? I can't just leave. And how did they get feet? They must have made a deal with the Sea Witch. That can't be good. We're all doomed. How are they ever going to get out of this one? And look at Dolph laughing it up with Esmeralda like they've known each other for years! <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Ahem, Dolph, what happened to the rescue mission? I'm on it. I'll distract Esmeralda so the Little Mermaid can fall in love with the prince. Then the spell will be broken. But then she'll be a human forever, Dolph! Oh, right. We have to make her fall out of love. So the two of them hatched a plan to make the Little Mermaid fall out of love. They put marbles on the dance floor to make them look clumsy. But the Little Mermaid just thought it was a cool new dance and joined in. They released helium out of party balloons to make his voice all squeaky. Would you like a glass of punch? Whoa, what's up with my voice? But the Little Mermaid thought the prince was just being so hilarious. I thought that would work. Me too. <laughs> that was so funny. The Sea King and Dolph even shaved a skunk stripe in his hair when he wasn't looking. Huh? But the Little Mermaid didn't think it was a weird haircut or anything. She thought he looked really cool. I don't get it. No matter what we do, she just likes him more. Ugh, who could like a human? I don't know, they're not so bad. Like, take Esmeralda. She's pretty cool. Not you, too. What? I just think she's neat. Actually, I'm gonna go see what she's up to right now. Dolph! I don't know, she might need some punch or something. The Sea King didn't know what to do. His plan was failing. His daughter had a mega crush on a human and it seems like there was nothing he could do to change her mind. Pretty soon, the Sea Witch would win and gain control of his entire Sea Kingdom. He and Dolph would be useless jellyfish and the Little Mermaid would be a sea urchin. Suddenly, the Sea King had an idea. Of course! Why didn't I think of this before? I'll just tell everyone that my daughter's a mermaid. The royal family would never let their son marry a mermaid. Excuse me, I have an announcement. 
Oh no! I just wanted to say, it's so refreshing to see how nice you are to this mermaid! Mermaid? Mermaid? Who's a mermaid? Where? Right there! You're a mermaid? My mermaid, you saved me! Aw, that's so sweet! He's obviously joking, Jeffrey. Yeah, don't be silly. Of course it's a joke. I knew that. <laughs> no, it's true! She's a mermaid, and the sea witch gave her feet. The sea witch? This guy's hilarious. I mean... Right? Who ever heard of a sea witch? <laughs> oh, no! What's going on? A uh, long story. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The sea witch had just crashed the party and um, it was awkward. So, um, anyone know any good jokes? I know one. How did the sea urchin cross the road? Uh, how? It didn't. I don't get it. It's an inside joke. Oh, now I get it. Time's almost up, by the way. Uh-oh. I had to get the prince to declare his love for me, and fast! If that didn't happen soon, then I'd be a sea urchin forever! What's the matter, dear? Cheer up! It's a party! Right, Prince Jeff? Wait a second. Your voice. You sound so familiar. Darling, don't you remember me? I rescued you. But you're not a mermaid. No, sweetie, I'm not, but... You fell in love with me, remember? I remember now. And you said we were to be married, remember that? That's right. Excellent. Let's all just forget about all that silly nonsense about mermaids and sea witches, okay? Okay. Great! All right, who's ready for a royal wedding? Cool. Sounds great. Mazel tov. Oh no! Everyone was hypnotized by the evil sea witch's spell. What? No! It can't be. Well, everyone except for me, Dolph, and my dad. I guess this spell only worked on real humans. I don't even know how evil magic works. Okay, quick rundown on why this is very, very bad. If Prince Jeff marries her, then the mermaid turns into a voiceless sea urchin. And we turn into jellyfish, I think. All these curses and spells are starting to get confusing. Then the sea witch will take over the entire sea kingdom. And she'll be royalty here on land if she marries the prince. She could take over the whole world. We gotta stop this. Yeah. And now the part where we come up with a plan. Operation Defeat the Evil Sea Witch, part one. He may have had human legs, but my dad was still the almighty sea king. And that meant he could summon an army of the toughest sea creatures to help us. <gasps> Is this thing on? <gasps> uh, what's up, your majesty? I need you to gather all your friends. It's time to battle. Ooh, this is so exciting. While the Sea King explained the situation to the shark, Dolph began his part of the plan, which brings us to Operation Defeat the Evil Sea Witch, part two. Ee, 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 ee. Hey guys, Dolph, is that you? What happened to your tail? Uh, that's not important, but listen up. I need your help. Dolph explained everything to his dolphin brethren while I went to work on my part of the plan, stall for time. The sea witch had put everyone to work while she was just lounging around in a deck chair, sipping on a pineapple drink and barking orders. I don't want crab, I want lobster. You call these flowers, try again. More shiny thingies, more ruffly stuff, more everything. Everything. Jeez, what a bridezilla. That is so not cool. We're almost finished with this dress. Oh no, we have to start all over. Oops. Wedding today, 3 p.m. <laughs> now to find Prince Jeff. I'm so excited to marry my true love. Poor guy, he doesn't know what he's saying. Hey, let me out. I have to get married to my lovely bride. Ugh. Okay, I hope Dolph and my dad are ready. What do you think you're doing, you urchin? Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Let's keep reading. Chapter 10, 
here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I've decided I can't wait to marry the prince. He's just so dreamy. Out of my way, shrimp. Wow, that is so mean. She looks mad. My darling, let's go get married. Okay, my love. Things are getting a little too real. Where's Dolph and my dad? E -e 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 -e. They're here! Whoa! Whoa! Let's go! Start the wedding! We're gathered today, whoa, to join this, whoa! Skip to the end. Do you, wait, what's your name? Whatever, it doesn't matter, keep going. Do you, whatever, it doesn't matter, keep going, take this man, Prince Jeff to be. I do. Prince Jeff, do you, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Don't worry, we got this. You, you're doing this. I was gonna play fair, but I changed my mind. Ah, watch out! You'll have to go through me first. No problem. <laughs> ah! Mmm, <laughs> tastes like chicken. Uh, what happened? The evil sea witch's spell is broken. Hey, that guy has a tail. Uh-oh. What's going on? Really long story. Hey, talking dolphin. Uh, I should go. And look, she's a mermaid. Uh, uh-oh. Wait a minute, it's you. It is. <laughs> you can talk. I can. <laughs> and you're a real mermaid. Yeah. Very cool. Jeff, are you okay? Absolutely. I told you mermaids were real. Oh, so cute. Six months later. So everything was working out great. The sea witch was defeated and her spells were broken. I didn't turn into a gross sea urchin and my dad and Dolph weren't turned into jellyfish. Yay! <laughs> Esmeralda admitted she didn't want to get married anyway. Convenient. <laughs> and Prince Jeff finally found his mermaid. Moi. <laughs> and best of all, after lots of begging and explaining, my dad and Prince Jeff's parents agreed that it would be okay if he and I went on a real date. So far, so good. And by the way, um, milkshakes are delicious. <laughs> hey, wanna hear me sing? Of course. <laughs> Aw, happily ever after. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time, bye. Once he was untied, Prince John hightailed it out of there, but he quickly found out he had no idea where he was or where he should go. Meanwhile, Briar was still in her deep sleep, dreaming a sweet dream about her prince. Ah, her dashing prince. But then something weird happened. Her prince suddenly changed into someone else. Another prince. Hi kids, welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading Sleeping Beauty. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Once upon a time in an enchanted land far, far away, there lived a king and a queen. One day, after many, many years of hoping for a baby, the king and queen had a little baby girl, a princess named Briar Rose. Everyone in the land was so excited about the new baby princess, especially the fairies. You see, fairies love babies. Aw, that's so sweet. So the fairies all got together to plan a party to celebrate little Briar Rose. Fairies also love parties. <laughs> Ooh, I love the streamers, Twinkles. Thanks, boss. And Sparkle, those cupcakes look scrumptious. Buttercup, how is the music coming? Great, I've almost got the speakers set up. Speakers work. Excellent. Everything was shaping up for a wonderful party. Well, all except for one teeny tiny detail that everyone overlooked, no one had invited Grimsley. Grimsley was not like the other fairies. The other fairies liked to flit and flutter about, singing sweet songs and sprinkling pixie glitter on everything. 
And Grimsley, well, Grimsley liked to do sort of mischievous things like gluing fairies' wings together. We're stuck! And filling the pixie glitter jars with dirt. And she absolutely loved to put curses on the other fairies. Curse you! I turn you into a frog! Hey! Wow, that is so mean. Grimsley just wasn't very nice. Maybe that's why it never occurred to any of the other fairies to invite her. Anyway, the party started out like any other fairy party. It was lots of fun and everyone was happy until... What? I just came to bring a present for the baby. Oh, how lovely. Thank you. The king and queen opened Grimsley's present, but they were confused. What is this? A spindle? Briar Rose is far too young to play with a spindle. See kids, a spindle is a sharp, pointy thing used to make yarn. So not exactly a good gift for a baby. But then Grimsley said, You didn't read the card. It explains the curse. A curse? Oh no. This is gibberish. It says here that when Briar Rose turns 16, she'll prick her finger on a spindle and fall into a hundred years sleep. The only thing that will wake her is true love. And good luck with that. Hard to find love when you're nothing. What did she say? She just put a curse on Briar Rose. A purse? A curse. Oh no, curses are bad. That's right kids, curses are bad, especially when they're from an angry fairy. Grimsley flew away, but the damage was done. Everyone was majorly bummed out. The next day, the king and queen banned Grimsley from the kingdom and ordered that all spindles be thrown away. This is a no spindle zone, no spindles. And it remained a no spindle zone for exactly 16 years. And then one day, a nearly grown up Briar Rose went exploring around the castle. <laughs> know about this. What you doing? I'm spinning. <laughs> really? This is how I spin. Uh, whoa. Uh, uh, <laughs> makes me dizzy though. <laughs> I'm spinning yarn. Then I'll make you a pretty dress. Oh, that's so nice of you. Hey, I've never seen you around here before. Are you new? I've been around for years, but no one visits me much. Oh, well, now that I know you're here, I'll come and visit you every day. <laughs> hey, could I try? Ooh, I poked myself. Ugh, it's not too bad though. It only hurts a little bit. Too bad. She was actually kind of sweet. Oh well. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. What? No! That can't be. Briar Rose had fallen into a deep sleep. Oh no, just like the curse said she would. When she didn't show up for dinner, the king and queen began to worry. Everyone went looking for her. Briar Rose! Briar Rose, where are you? When they found her sleeping, the spindle beside her, they all knew that Grimsley was to blame. The king and queen were so upset, but Grand Fairy, the oldest and wisest of all the fairies, had an idea. I can cast a spell that will make everyone in the castle fall asleep and only wake when the princess wakes. Then it will be as if no time has passed at all. The king and queen agreed to it. Grand Fairy summoned all the magic she could, and with a wave of her fairy wand, everyone fell asleep. Yay, magic to the rescue. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Yep, still sleeping. And they slept and slept and slept. Nothing could wake them up. Over the years, the trees grew around the castle like a jungle, and eventually people kind of just forgot that it had ever even existed. But inside the castle, Briar Rose looked exactly as she did the day she fell asleep. Luckily, Grimsley hadn't cursed her dreams, and Briar Rose had plenty of sweet dreams. One time, she dreamed she lived in a land of puppies, just puppies everywhere for as far as the eye could see. Oh, so cute. Puppies! <laughs> and then another time, the puppies were replaced by kittens. <gasps> kittens! <laughs> Actually, there were lots of dreams like that. Puppies, kittens, ponies, unicorns, hamsters, unicorn hamsters. Pretty much anything cute slash awesome and Briar Rose dreamt about it. But Briar Rose's favorite dream was the one with the prince. Ah, the prince. The prince dream always started the same. Briar Rose would wake up bright and early. Then 
I would walk into the garden where all the birds and woodland creatures would come out to greet me. Hi, Briar Rose. Briar Rose is here. We love you, Briar Rose. I would do the usual dream stuff, like dance around and sing with the animals. But then a handsome prince arrives on horseback. That prince is so handsome. He is, of course, smitten with me and declares he is in love with me at first sight. Oh, princess, I'm in love with you at first sight. Marry me. I can't live without you. I hop onto his horse and we fly around. What? It's a dream. Horses fly in my dream. <laughs> anyway, then he whisks me away to his kingdom and we live happily ever after. <sighs> it's my favorite dream. But it was just that, a dream. Oddly enough, there was a prince from a nearby kingdom who looked a lot like the prince in Briar Rose's dream. His name was Prince John. Prince John and his brother Peter grew up hearing the legend of the sleeping princess and the true love that would save her. Everyone said her castle was somewhere deep in the woods, but no one had been able to find it. No way. I've been all through those woods. That's all just fairy tale stuff. You don't know for sure. It could be true. Yeah, right. Next you're going to tell me the fairies are real. But remember kids, fairies are real, and they were on the lookout for a prince who might be Briar Rose's one true love. Ooh, this is so exciting. He seems like a nice boy. He doesn't even believe in fairies. No, not that one, the other one. The one who looks all dreamy-eyed whenever anyone mentions the princess. Oh, that one. Yes, he does seem nice. We have to lead him to the castle. Then he'll find Briar Rose, and somehow they'll fall in love. Haven't figured that part out yet. Maybe we could just sprinkle him with some pixie glitter. Did you hear something? Huh? Gazoontite. Could have sworn I heard a tiny sneeze. Heh, <laughs> it was probably the fairies. Oh look, he's handsome too. Let's go tell Grand Fairy and Sparkle that we found the perfect prince. Twinkles and Buttercup flew back towards the castle, excited to tell the other good fairies that they had found a prince for Briar Rose. But they were suddenly stopped in their tracks. Uh, watch out! Hello, Stinkle, Butterpoop. What's up? It's Twinkles! And Buttercup! What are you doing here, Grimsley? You were banned! Yes, but the king and queen who banned me are fast asleep. What are they gonna do? Snore me to death? Well, they're gonna be awake soon because we found a charming young prince to come break the curse. Yeah, we're gonna tell Grand Fairy and Sparkle right now! You are, huh? It'd be a shame if you couldn't do that. What do you mean? What's the matter? Mean Fairy got your tongue? <laughs> okay, have fun with that. See ya! And I will see ya because there is no way I'm going to let you break my curse and spoil all my fun. Ooh, I didn't see that coming. Let's keep reading. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. First, let's check on Briar Rose. Still sleeping. Buttercup and Twinkles thought that they had discovered the perfect match for Briar Rose when they found Prince John. But after Grimsley's curse, they couldn't speak. So how were they gonna tell Grand Fairy and Sparkles? What would you do if you were there? Oh, I love charades! A bird! A plane! Superman? I think they're trying to say that a bird attacked them. Why don't you just write it down? None of us know how to read or write. Oh, right. They don't teach that at fairy school. How about drawing? Can you guys draw out what you're trying to say? Grimsley casting a spell and they can't Talk. Oh, Grimsley cursed you and took your voices. But why? Because they fell in love with the prince. Huh? Oh, oh, I know. They found the prince to break the spell. And then Grimsley must have found out and cursed them so they couldn't tell anyone. Now tell us how to find that prince. Buttercup and Twinkles drew out directions on how to get to the prince's castle. And Grand Fairy and Sparkle set out to find him. Yay, I'm so happy. Let's check on Briar Rose again and see how things are going with her. Still snoozing away. <laughs> Let's see what she's dreaming about. Ah, it's the one about the prince. Really looks like true love, doesn't it? But wait, what's that? It's 
the bad fairy Grimsley. Oh no, that's not good. We only want Briar Rose to have sweet dreams. Well, let's get back to the story. When Grand Fairy and Sparkle got to the castle, they scoped it out detective style. Got him! Let's go! Remember, try not to scare him. Got it! Hi! Ah. Oh no! He's out cold. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Hey, just like Briar Rose. She's sleeping, he's sleeping. Match me in heaven. Hello, Prince, wake up. Oh, Prince. Here, allow me. Hey, wake up. Uh. Don't be scared. We're fairies, and we've come to tell you about your true love. Huh? But what the good fairies didn't know, boys and girls, is that they were talking to the wrong prince, Prince Peter. Ugh. The right prince, Prince John, was far away. See, Grimsley had beaten Good Fairy and Sparkle to the castle and captured Prince John. That's right, kids. Grimsley would stop at nothing to foil the Good Fairy's effort to break her spell. What? No, that can't be. Where am I? You're in the Enchanted Kingdom, the land of magic and fairies. And who are you? I'm Grimsley, the greatest fairy of them all. Oh, very impressive. And why am I tied up? Well, I may as well tell you. You are supposed to fall in love with a princess named Briar Rose, AKA Sleeping Beauty. I am? Yes, but she's cursed to sleep for 100 years, and I can't have you going to break the curse. Wait, are you talking about the Sleeping Beauty? I knew she was real. But wait, why don't you want me to break the curse? I don't want you to break the curse because I'm the one who cursed her. But why did you curse her? Because I'm a bad fairy and that's what I do. Now zip it before I curse you too. Prince John had so many more questions, but he decided he'd better do as Grimsley said and zip it. He soon fell asleep and had a dream, a very sweet dream about a lovely princess. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Prince John had fallen asleep and was dreaming of a princess. It was just a dream, but it felt so real. So real that when he woke up, he was very disappointed to find that he was still tied up at Grimsley's. The good news was the bad fairy was nowhere to be seen. Prince John knew that this was his chance. I have to escape. <clears throat> huh, that was easy. Yeah, fun fact, fairies are terrible at tying knots. That's why they never wear shoes with any laces. Oh, now I get it. Once he was untied, Prince John hightailed it out of there, but he quickly found out he had no idea where he was or where he should go. Meanwhile, Briar was still in her deep sleep, dreaming a sweet dream about her prince. Ah, her dashing prince. But then something weird happened. Her prince suddenly changed into someone else. Another prince. But this prince was all wrong. He said, No, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Huh? That part wasn't a dream. You see, Grand Fairy and Sparkle had brought Prince Peter to see Briar Rose. They thought he would take one look at Briar Rose and realize he was madly in love with her. But he just saw a sleeping princess with a little bit of drool on her cheek. They asked him, so, are you in love? And Prince Peter replied, you guessed it. No, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Are you sure? Yeah, no. Why did you think we'd be in love anyway? She's cursed into a deep sleep, and only her true love can wake her up. We thought that might be you. Whoa, this is the legendary Sleeping Beauty. My brother is always going on and on and on about her. It's like he's in love with her or something. Wait, hold up. You have a brother? Yeah. That must be who Twinkles and Buttercup saw. Where is he? I don't know. I saw him leaving with some little lady. Hey, come to think of it, she had wings just like you guys. Grimsley! We have to go rescue that prince. Let's go! Okay. I guess I'll just see myself out. <laughs> that was so funny. The good fairies set off to find Grimsley's hideout, but they wouldn't find Prince John there. He was wandering the enchanted forest, trying to get to Sleeping Beauty's castle. It must be around here somewhere. 
Prince John was determined to find Briar Rose. He trudged through the mud. He swam through alligator infested waters. He leapt over pits of snakes. Nothing could stop him. That is, until he got to a very large, very tall brick wall covered in vines. Whoa, that is one big wall. Whatever, I'll just climb up the vines. Ow, ow, ooh, ah, ugh, ah. You see, the wall was covered in rose vines and prickly thorns, otherwise known as... <gasps> briars. That's right, kids. Thorny bushes are also known as briars. Prince John wondered if this might be significant. Hey, briars, roses, briar rose. I bet briar rose is on the other side of this wall. And she was. Only trouble was, Prince John would have to climb over the very ouchy wall of thorny briars. But he was determined. The fate of true love kept him going strong. Aw, true love. Ow, ow, ooh, ouch, ooh, ow. About a hundred hours later, and Prince John was at the top of the wall. <gasps> Is this Sleeping Beauty's castle? Wait, what's that noise? That sounds like snoring. This is it. I made it. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm okay. Time to go break the spell. Looks like we're on our way to a happy ending, kids. But wouldn't you know it, trouble was a Bruin in another part of the enchanted forest. Grand Fairy and Sparkle had just made it to Grimsley's hideout and found a very angry Grimsley. And kids, when fairies get angry, watch out. You! You did this! Did what? Released my prisoner! Oh, you mean Briar Rose's one true love? We did it! That looks like he's on his way to break the spell, doesn't it? Not if I get there first. And Grimsley shot out like a cannon. What do you think she's gonna do? I don't know, but we better stop her. Oh, uh, not again! The good fairies knew that they had to stop Grimsley. It was a race against time, good versus evil, but love must prevail. Whoa, that was scary. Let's keep reading. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Prince John had just made it to the sleeping castle. Now, let's go save the princess. Prince John wandered the castle looking for Briar Rose's room, which as it turns out, wasn't too difficult. Well, that was easy. <laughs> All right. Prince John opened the door. You might imagine something like this happened next. My prince, my one true love. Marry me. Oh, so cute. But what really happened is this. Uh, hey, Briar Rose. Um, I think I'm supposed to wake you up. I mean, I don't mean to sound presumptuous or anything, but I might be your true love. It's destiny or something? Um, I guess I'll wait here until you wake up. I'm sorry, this is really awkward. I'm just going to wait outside. Woo! I'm okay! <laughs> that was so funny. <gasps> what was that? Sorry, uh, I just fell. Briar Rose, you're awake! Who are... <gasps> you're my prince from the dreams! Huh? You dreamed of me? Yeah. Wait, am I awake or is this another dream? Oh, please, please, pretty, please tell me I'm really awake. You're really awake. And she was. Sleeping Beauty was no longer sleeping. Her true love had awakened her by being clumsy and noisy. How romantic. Yay, I'm so happy. Woohoo! <laughs> Wait, what year is it? How long was I out for? Did you hear me snoring? Oh gosh, do I have drool on my face? Please tell me I don't have drool on my face. All good. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, you broke the spell, huh? Yes, I'm apparently your one true love. I mean, if it's okay with you. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I already know everything about you. This is so weird, <laughs> but cool. But just as the two lovebirds were getting to know each other, they heard a very odd noise. What is that? It sounds like an airplane. Okay, but what is that? Oh, <laughs> I, I guess those were invented after you were cursed. It's a thing you can fly around in. Oh, what? Cool! Wait, how long was I asleep? Like, almost a full hundred years. Wow, that is so cool. 
so I'm really like over a hundred years old. <laughs> Is my hair gray? No, it's brown. Um, <laughs> I think we should be more focused on that noise because it sounds like it's coming right this way. I'm okay. Oh, hello, Briar Rose. You're up. Who are you? It's the bad fairy. We have to run. Oh, oh. Oh, my legs are asleep. I can't move. Uh, watch out. I am Grimsley, the greatest fairy of evil, and I curse you. But before she could finish her curse, Briar Rose said, pull me out of here. Hey, where'd they go? Once they got out of the castle, Briar Rose tried to wake up the rest of her body. Better? Yeah, I think so. Okay, good, because <laughs> it's time to run. Where are we going to go? I don't know. But wherever they ran, Grimsley was going to follow. And she was working up her worst curse yet. A curse? Oh, no. Let's keep reading. Chapter 6. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Briar Rose and Prince John were on the run from the bad fairy Grimsley. Only problem was they didn't know where to go. So they kind of just ran around freaking out. Ah! Meanwhile, since the 100 years of sleeping spell had been broken, the rest of the castle was waking up. We're awake. Hurrah! But the hurrahs stopped when they found that Briar Rose was not in her room. Where's the princess? <gasps> the princess is missing. That's when, rather conveniently, the good fairies arrived. Grand Fairy and Sparkle were exhausted from flying all over, trying to undo Grimsley's mischief. But they had a job to do, and good fairies never give up. Aw, that is so nice. So we have some good news and some bad news. Good news is the spell has been broken. Yay! But the bad news... What are they doing? Oh, Grimsley cursed them and took their voices. They're trying to tell you the bad news. Which is that Grimsley is planning another curse. And we're not sure what she's going to do. But it's probably very, very, very bad. Oh no! She must have taken Briar Rose. Don't worry, we'll find her. Let's go, gang. Back in the forest, Briar Rose and Prince John had found what they thought was a great hiding spot. Let's just hang out here for a bit and maybe Grimsley will just give up and leave. But that proved to be wishful thinking because guess who showed up? Oh no, run! Hey guys, what's up? Are we playing hide and seek? <laughs> yep, Grimsley had found them. Not good. Hmm, let's see. What sort of evil spell should I cast? I could turn you into frog. That's always fun. Oh, or how about I turn Briar Rose into a frog and Prince John into a fly? And then Briar the frog will mm. eat John the fly. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, no thanks. Oh, I could turn you into donkeys. Have people, have horse, maybe turn you into statues. Oh, I know. I won't turn you into anything at all. You won't? No. I'll turn myself into... A dragon? Ah, this is scary. What are we going to do? Uh, I don't know. Run? Okay, maybe not. Fortunately, help was on the way. The good fairies were flying at top speed on the hunt for Grimsley, ready to stop her in her evil tracks. Uh oh! Uh, what's our plan again? Find Grimsley and trap her in this bag. Yeah, I think we'll need a bigger bag. I have an idea. Follow me. The good fairies flew right at Grimsley's face. You know, the one that was breathing fire at everyone? Usually not a good idea, but... Pixie Glitter, now! Hey, get out of here! I can't see! Ow! I burned myself! Well, maybe you should stop breathing fire! Never! Ow! Ha! You're in trouble, villain! Give it up, Grimsley! You're a thief! Yeah, Prince John and Briar Rose have true love. They broke the spell. Yeah, love wins. This was like a poison to Grimsley. Bad fairies do not like love. Ugh, gross. Don't invite me to the wedding. Don't worry, you're not going anywhere. Except 
fairy jail. Is that a thing? We'll figure it out. The important thing was that the day was saved. Grimsley was defeated and forced to undo all her evil spells. The Twinkles and Buttercup got their voices back and the Enchanted Kingdom was awake and happy. Normally, we'd say that this was a happy ending, but since Briar Rose and John only just met, let's call this one a happy beginning. That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Ow. What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Ah! ah monster, run! Thank you for chasing away those bullies. But I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Okay, I'm gonna take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Frankenstein. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, I'm Mary Shelley Frankenstein, sister to the world's biggest mischief-making little brother, Victor Frankenstein. You've all heard that story, of course, but I'm here to tell you my version. Okay, here goes. Once upon a time, long, long ago. Okay, it was actually pretty recent, but I like it when stories start that way. <laughs> anyway, once upon a time, not very long ago, there was a boy named Victor. Victor Frankenstein. That's Dr. Frankenstein. He's not a doctor, obviously. He's ten. <laughs> ten and a half. Anyway, one day he was bored. And when Victor Frankenstein gets bored, bad things happen. For example, one time he filled all my shoes with slime. Ew! Victor! That is so not cool. And then one time he put baking soda and vinegar in his teacher's coffee. And yeah, it exploded. Victor! And this one time, oh, this is really bad, he put glue on the toilet seat and my dad got stuck. Ah! Victor? So like I was saying, bored Victor equals bad Victor. And that's how the story begins. I'm bored. I want to make something, something big, Something bad, something epic. I know. Today I'm gonna create a monster! Let's keep reading. Victor went down to his laboratory, AKA our basement, and got to work. That's where he did all his experiments. I should have enough to work with down here. Hmm, let's see. Some fishing hooks, I can use those. Slinky, check. Some nuts and bolts and screws and stuff, sure. Modeling clay, finger paints, glue, grandpa's toupee, perfect. A garbage can, some brooms, a mop, googly eyes, a couple of my sister's patriotic girl dolls, my old teddy bear, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Wait, no, I didn't mean it, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Promise, forgive me? I love you too, Teddy. Aw, that's sweet. But don't be fooled. Victor was up to a seriously naughty scheme. Now back to my seriously naughty scheme. It's time to create my monster. A monster that will wreak havoc and destroy the whole world. <laughs> oh no, don't be scared, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. My monster won't destroy you. Now, time to work. Victor worked all day into the night, not even stopping for snack time. He snipped, ripped, chopped, blew, Fastened, refastened, attached thingamabobs and whatchamacallits until finally he was satisfied. My monster! Now to bring him to life. It's alive! Oh no. Okay, I thought that would work. It's alive? How do I turn this thing on? It's. It's, it's alive! <laughs> yes, and now we 
will unleash chaos onto the world. <laughs> okay, monster, let's go! Oh, are you hungry? Uh. Let's see, what do monsters eat? There's some leftover meatloaf in here. It's really gnarly, so you might like that. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, you get enough to eat yet? We have to go wreak havoc and chaos and stuff. Uh. Whoa, awesome! Hey, wait for me! Victor, you stop right there, young man. Who made this mess? My monster did it? Right, sure, a monster did it. Well, guess who's going to clean it up? Me? That's right. But... Oh, no buts. But there was a but. A big one. A real, live monster was on the loose. How are they ever going to get out of this one? Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Everywhere the monster went, people screamed and ran. They all thought he was a big and scary monster, but really, he was probably more afraid than anyone. The world was brand new to him, and he couldn't help but be frightened. <gasps> Finally, he found a nice resting spot and fell asleep. Okay, so maybe it wasn't such a good resting spot because during recess, the jungle gym is a pretty happening spot. And it wasn't very long until... Ah! And that woke the monster. Ah! Oh no, run! The monster felt a little bit safer in the woods. He sat there and watched the playground waiting for the kids to leave. A bell rang and the kids left. But then an older group of kids came out, including me. Ow! What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Ah, monster, run! Take that, bad guy. I think that was his attempt at a smile. Thank you for chasing away those bullies, but I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Okay, I'm gonna take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Well, recess is over, so I have to go. See ya. <laughs> oh no, you're sad. Okay, how about this? You stay. Stay here, okay? And I'll be back later. Can you nod and let me know you understand? Okay. Great. <laughs> School's out at three. I'll see you then. Back in the classroom, I made a list. Fun learning activities for monsters. Then after school, I met back up with the monster and we got to work. First, we practiced language arts. Repeat after me. Monster. 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 Mon. Okay, that's pretty close. Now add the stir. Monster. Monster. Great. Okay, I should really teach you some more words, but that took like an hour, so let's move on to something else. Wow, this is so fun. How about some social skills? Let's try a handshake. Ah. Now we put our hands together and then we shake. Ah. Oh. 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 Ah. Okay, you're doing really great. But can you put me down? <sighs> Good, thanks. All right, next on the list was how do you high five, but let's move on. <laughs> we spent the rest of the afternoon doing our lessons. The monster learned how to sing. <laughs> and how to dance. Go monster, go monster, go, go monster. And we worked on hygiene. Yes, see, after you eat a whole handful of worms and bugs, it's
it's good to wash your hands. <laughs> and speaking of eating, it's time for me to go home for dinner. Do you think you'll be okay here for tonight? <laughs> yeah, you better come with me. I'll hide you in my old playhouse. But by the time I got home and the monster was all settled in, news had gotten out. Reports of the mystery monster have been coming in all day. From people like this gentleman. I nearly ran him over in my car last night. I don't know if my insurance would have covered that. And these innocent children. I was just minding my own business when he tried to hit me with a ball. City officials are urging citizens to stay inside and lock your doors. But some local vigilantes want to take matters into their own hands. Yeah, we're gonna get that monster. I ain't afraid of no monster. Uh-oh. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. According to eyewitness reports, the monster has caused over $11,000 in damage, and an old-fashioned pitchfork and torch-wielding gang of locals has sworn to capture the beast. Yeah. yeah. Back to you, Chuck. Oh, dear. I told you it was the monster that wrecked the kitchen. Go to bed, Victor. Well, I couldn't just leave the monster outside in my old playhouse, not with a bunch of vigilantes out there hunting him. Shh, okay, you can sleep in here, but you have to be quiet. Mama. Aw, that's sweet. Now, do you want the top bunk or the bottom? Uh. Oh, you're not sleepy? Do you want to play a game? Uh. So we played some games. We played Twister, Right Foot Blue, Uh, close enough. Jenga, Jenga, Jenga. Uh, then we went full on slumber party and did spa night. Ah! Well, that was weird. I thought I heard my monster in here. Your monster? Yeah, I created him in the basement. What's he doing with all that gunk on his face? We were having a spa night. What? Monsters don't do spa nights? Monsters are supposed to be ferocious and fierce and wreak havoc. He's not that kind of monster. I found him in the woods by the playground. He saved me from bullies, and now there are bullies looking for him. We have to protect our monster. Our monster? I think you mean my monster. He's coming with me. No way! Hey! Uh, uh, hey, keep it down in there. Quick, hide the monster. What on earth is going on in here? Nothing, Mom. Yep, nothing to see here. Uh-uh. What was that? Oh, my stomach. I don't think that leftover meatloaf sat too well with me, but uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> okay, well, time for bed. Yes, Mom. Okay, Mom. Now. Uh. Meatloaf. You sure you're okay? Yep. <laughs> Good night. See ya manana. Bye. Okay. Good night. Let's keep reading. Phew. That was close. Oh, we can't keep him here. There's no way mom and dad will let us keep a monster. True. But we can't take him outside either. The vigilante bully gang is looking for him. What if they hurt him? But he's a monster. He could just destroy the gang. Easy peasy. You seem to be forgetting that he's not the destructive, dangerous type. He's a big, sweet softy. Look. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's not gonna wreak any havoc. Hey, I know. Let's take him to Professor Weirdly's house. She'll know what to do. Great idea. Science teachers for the win. <laughs> okay, now how do we get him out of here without attracting attention? Of course. Uh -huh. Perfect. Let's go. So we set out into the night with our monster. It was a little scary, but there's no time to fear when you're on a mission. Super brave, right? Well, that was all about to change. We didn't know it yet, but the vigilante gang was closing in. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Ooh, I didn't see that coming. Chapter four, here we go. So all was going according to plan. We were on our way to see Professor Weirdly, the science teacher at our school. She would know what to do with the STEM project gone awry. Okay, cool. I can see Professor Weirdly's house. We're almost there. Is that what I think it is? Yep. What do we do now? 
Um, we could blast them with a giant water balloon or some other projectiles. Or we could just cast a protective force field around ourselves. Ooh, or we could sick a giant robot on them. Or we could run. That's always an option. Let's go. Oh no, run! What do we have here? Oh, hi, sir. <laughs> nice weather we're having, huh? What are you kids doing out here this time of night? Who, us? Yes, you. We're just out for a little evening stroll. And you? I'm out looking for that monster that's been terrorizing the town. Oh, I haven't heard anything about that. Have you, Victor? No, Mary, not a word. A monster, you say? Who's that? Hmm? I said, who's that? Oh, her? Yes, uh, that's our grandma. Yep, <laughs> old granny. But don't bother trying to talk to her. She's hard of hearing. Uh, Granny, we're just telling this nice pitchfork-wielding gentleman that you're a little hard of hearing. <laughs> well, I guess it's our bedtime. Good night. Excuse us. Oh, hi, guys. We were just leaving. Come on, Granny. <laughs> Seemed too easy, right? We were just gonna walk away, but then suddenly we heard. Uh, Come on, Gran, time for bed. Uh, yeah, that's a kitty. Let's go. But the monster, being a big old sweetheart, jumped uh, into the tree to rescue the kitten. Great. Wow, your granny sure is spry. Hey, she saved the kitten. Okay, Granny, good job. Now let's go. Uh, uh-oh! That's him! That's the monster! Get him! Oh, this place is crazy! The gang was all riled up, and things were getting very scary. One guy swung his pitchfork up at the monster! Ha! I'll get ya! But he missed. Phew! But then it landed. Ah! Hey! You stuck me! And that guy had been waving around a torch, so when he got poked with the pitchfork, he accidentally let another guy's pants on fire. Arr! It was chaos! Finally! We could have just run away at that point, but the monster was such a big old sweetie that he just had to jump down and help. Arr! Ah, that's better. Phew, thanks. Hey, wait, he's being nice. Monsters aren't nice. Well, this one is. He protected me from bullies. He rescued that kitten, and now he's helping you. Yeah, and I created him specifically to be a supervillain, too. I don't know what went wrong. So will you guys leave him alone now? Are you sure he's good? Look at him. <coughs> yeah, OK, we'll let you go. But you all better get home soon. It's late. We know, just one more stop. Come on guys, let's go to Professor Weirdly's. Yay, I'm so happy. And Victor, you say you made this all by yourself? Yep, awesome, right? Very impressive. Where will you keep him, Professor? I think he'll be happy at school. He can live in the lab. So from that night on, our monster lived in Professor Weirdly's science lab at the school. It was great. He took care of the class pets. He helped kids with their homework. Well, he tried anyway. He even joined the cheer team. <laughs> he was the best school monster ever, and Victor and I got to see him every day. It was awesome. Yeah, but next time, I'll create a super bad monster that wreaks havoc and mayhem and destruction and, and... Oh boy, here we go. Wow, that was so much fun. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch of the West? Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkeys swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around until he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo! What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys! 
Why? Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is story time. Today we're reading The Wizard of Oz. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, <laughs> I lived in a place called Kansas with my aunt and uncle. <laughs> uncle Henry and Aunt Em. Hello. Hello. We lived on the prairie, which is a great big piece of land that stretches for miles and miles and miles and miles and is very flat. So flat and empty that you could stand in your front yard and see all around you. Oh look, there's Farmer Ted. Hey Farmer Ted. <laughs> he can't hear me of course, he's way too far away. What? <laughs> Life on our farm was very hard. Aunt Em and Uncle Henry worked so hard that they never even had time to smile. In fact, when I was little, Aunt Em had completely forgotten what happiness sounded like. So whenever I laughed, she would do this. <laughs> oh, heavens to Betsy, you startled me. Everything at our house looked sad. The hot sun had baked everything until the land and all the buildings and even the people looked dried out and gray. That is so sad. Yeah, just like that. Just like an old black and white movie. The only thing that made me happy was my little dog, Toto. <laughs> Hi, Toto. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Is it you? Is it you? <laughs> Sorry, but come on, look at how cute he is. Okay, on with the story. Here's where things get exciting. So, one day Toto and I were playing fetch with the stick. <laughs> That's literally the only toy either of us had, but we made the best of it. <laughs> when we heard a crazy loud sound, it sounded like a train. I know because I rode a train once all the way to Oklahoma. <laughs> anyway, the sound was getting louder and louder and louder. Toto, we have to hide. I think a freight train is coming for us or something. Wait, but there aren't any tracks here. How in the heck? Ah, a flying cow. Dorothy, a cyclone's coming! Cyclone? Oh no, cyclones are super scary. You know what a cyclone is, right? Tornado, twister, dust devil. Ah, this is scary. Yeah, that. Toto, the house is totally flying. Oh my, this is even more exciting than the train ride. I wonder when we're gonna land, or where we're gonna land. Oh. Toto, I think we've landed. I hope we're not too far from home. I wouldn't know the first thing about moving a house back into the yard. Wow, okay, we're definitely far from home. I bet we're even farther than Oklahoma. <laughs> What's that, a kitty cat? <laughs> hey, who are you? He's a munchkin, and he's very grateful to you, noble sorceress. Grateful? To me? Why? Because you squished the Wicked Witch of the East. What? Me? No way! I wouldn't even squish a fly! Ask Toto. But you did squish her. Or your house did anyway. Look! But I didn't do that on purpose, I promise! Don't worry, we're happy she's gone. She was a very wicked witch who ruled over the munchkins for hundreds of years. Really? Yes, she was wicked. She was awful. She was the worst. Are you a munchkin? No, dear, I'm the witch of the north. Oh, a witch? A, a witch? Oh, no. But you seem nice. I thought all witches were wicked. I'm a good witch. Unfortunately, a good witch's powers are never as strong as a wicked one's. But now there is only one wicked witch left. Ah, ah. where? Not here, sillies. The last Wicked Witch rules over the West, and she's even more wicked than her sister. Hey, she's gone. Did she come back to life? Oh no, zombie witches must be the absolute worst. No, no. See, when a witch is defeated, she disappears. Poof, like magic. Yay! The munchkins love magic. Oh yeah? <laughs> well, check this out. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, it was only a trick. I thought you liked magic tricks. Magic's supposed to be nice. That was scary. Sheesh, tough crowd. I probably ought to get back to Kansas. Are you the good witch of Kansas? Me? No, there are no witches in Kansas. <laughs> but you did fly here. Oh, no, that was just my house. <laughs> my house did the flying, but I can't fly. <laughs> I promise I'm not a witch. So anyway, how do I get back? Is there a train or something? 
Nope, guess you'll just have to stay. Yay! You can be our queen! All hail Queen... What's your name? Dorothy? All, All hail, hail Queen, queen Dorothy. Dorothy! Hooray! Yeah! Hurrah! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The munchkins cheered and celebrated their new queen. Oh, hail, hail the queen. queen Dorothy. Our queen. But Dorothy didn't want to be queen. She just wanted to go home. I don't want to live in, wait, what is this place called? Oz, dear. You are in the land of Oz. Why are you sad? Your house is right here. Yes, but it's not in the right place. And I'm sure Uncle Henry and Aunt Em must be so confused. They've never had their whole house just disappear like this. Let us cheer you up. Quick, someone tell a joke. Why didn't the Wicked Witch of the East cross the road? Why? Because you squished her with your house. <laughs> what, too soon? Okay, that's pretty good, but how about this one? I just flew in from Kansas, and boy, my house is tired. <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, anyway, so we were talking about how I might get home. Can't go to the south. It's a great big desert where no one could survive. Except for the quadlings, but they eat sand and drink sunshine. Weird, next. And you can't go east because there are big mountains with giant birds and wapangs. Don't know what that is, but it sounds scary. Next. <laughs> and you could try and go west, but that's where the other wicked witch lives, and she is seriously wicked. No thanks. <laughs> Guys, what am I gonna do? Well, you could go center. Go center? Yes, go straight to the center of Oz, to the city of emeralds. That's where the wizard lives. He can help you get home. The wizard? Is he wicked? Oh, not at all. He's very wise. Well, how do I get to the center? To get to the city of emeralds, one must follow the road of yellow bricks. Road of yellow bricks? That road right there. Will it be dangerous? I will bless you with as much good magic as I can, but you must be careful. Good luck, Dorothy. I'm too tired and hungry to start my journey now. May I stay here a night, Munchkins? Of course you can, Queen Dorothy. The Munchkins were so excited to have Dorothy stay with them, even if it were only for one night. They prepared a feast of beautiful fruits that Dorothy had never seen, and lots of tiny cakes filled with candy and ice cream. Delicious! We want you to have these, Queen Dorothy. Me? Really? Well, you are the one who defeated the Wicked Witch. And they're also way too big for our munchkin feet. They're really beautiful. And legend says they're magic. Maybe they'll protect you on your journey to the Emerald City. Yay, magic to the rescue. Well, they are super comfy and they do match my dress. <laughs> okay, I'll take them. The next morning, Dorothy and Toto said goodbye to the munchkins and began their trip down the yellow brick road when they passed a farm where something odd caught Dorothy's eye. Toto, look at that scarecrow. He almost looks like a real man, doesn't he? <laughs> Did you just wink? Maybe. <laughs> hey, you can talk? I've never seen a talking scarecrow. Well, how do you do, Mr. Scarecrow? Not very well. Oh, no? A lot of crows here? It's not that. I'm just very uncomfortable up here. I mean, I got a pole stuck in my back. But all scarecrows do. Well, trust me, it's terrible. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Who's that? The munchkin who put you up there? No, the crows. <coughs> Ugh, get out of here. Oh, right. <laughs> well, why don't you just get down from there? That would be amazing. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, wait, I know. It's because I don't have a brain. You don't? Nope, nothing but straw between my ears. That's too bad. I really like having a brain. At least I think I do. But it's my brain that makes me think that. Uh, I don't get it. Sorry, I'll help you down. Huzzah! So, what's your name? Oh, how impolite of me. I'm Dorothy from Kansas. I'm on my way to see the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard? I bet he has brains. Yes, and he's going to help me get back home. Hey, maybe he could give you some brains. Why didn't I think of that? Mm, the whole brain thing. 
Oh, right, the brain thing. See, it's really annoying. Well, it's settled. You'll come with me to the Emerald City, and the wizard will help me get to Kansas, and he'll give you a brain. Huzzah! And off they went to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. There they are, Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow traveling the yellow brick road. They walked for miles and miles, and finally, phew, I'm pooped. Let's just sit down and rest for a while. Okay, wait, why? Because I'm tired and hungry. That means I need to eat something. I'm never hungry, and that's a good thing because my mouth is only painted on. If I cut a hole there, all my straw would fall out. Then you'd have a very funny shaped head. It's true. Dorothy, can you tell me more about Kansas? Sure. I live there with my Aunt Em and Uncle Henry and Toto, of course. <laughs> it's very quiet, except for when there's a cyclone and everything is all gray. <laughs> Not beautiful and colorful like here. Well, why do you want to go back if it's so nice here? Because Kansas is my home, and there's no place like home. Oh, so cute. Then why did you come here in the first place? I didn't mean to. My house just landed here after a storm. Long story. <laughs> and then yada yada, I squished the Wicked Witch of the East, and now I have her shoes. Do you like them? They are very pretty. But wait, did you say you squished the Wicked Witch of the East? Yes, but not on purpose. The munchkins are very happy. <laughs> I'm their queen now. Wow! But enough about me. Tell me your story. Me? I don't know anything. I was only made one day ago. Ooh, tell me about that. Okay. I was made by a farmer. First he made my head and he painted on ears. Then I could hear. Next I had eyes and I could see. Then the farmer painted on a nose. I could smell corn and crows. Ah! Yikes, ah! crows. Luckily, I couldn't scream because I didn't have a mouth yet. So the farmer didn't know that I was afraid of the crows. Imagine a scarecrow scared of crows. Not good. When the farmer finished putting me all together, he stuck me up on a stick in the middle of the field. I didn't like being left alone with all those crows, so I tried to run, but it was no use. I was stuck. The crows all laughed at me and pecked my head and ate up all the farmer's corn right in front of me. They were so mean. That's so sad. Well, except for one very old crow. Just ignore those silly crows. But why aren't they afraid of me? I'm supposed to be a scarecrow. They know you're stuck up here and don't know how to get down. If only you had a brain. And I decided right then that I would get a brain one day. I just didn't know how. Then you came along, and now we're on our way to get me a brain from the great Oz of Emerald City. Speaking of, I'm ready to journey on. Let's go. Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow set off again on the road of yellow bricks. Everything was going just fine until... What was that? You're asking me? I don't have a brain. I don't really know stuff. Oh, right. <laughs> Wait, I think I hear it again. <laughs> Shh, Toto! I hope it's not a crow. Ah! Don't chop me! I would never! Why are you groaning? I've been stuck in this position for a whole year. It's very uncomfortable. Well, what can I do to help? Get my oil can, please. Oh, my joints are rusted stiff. Get my neck first. Ah, much better. Wow, this is so fun. Now my arm, please. What a relief. I thought I might be holding that forever. Feel better? A million times better. You saved my life. Dorothy saved my life too. And she squished the Wicked Witch of the East. Whoa, are you a witch? No, why does everyone keep asking me that? I'm just a girl from Kansas. We're on our way to the Wizard of Oz. I'm getting a brain. And I'm hoping to get back home. Do you know the great Oz? I never met him, but hey, do you think he could give me a heart? You don't have a heart? How sad, I think. It is sad, enough to make me cry. But if I cry, I'll get all stiff and rusty again. 
Well, you absolutely must join us on our trip. To the wizard we go. Wait, oil can. Good call. Okay, now to the wizard we go. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hey, look, 475 schmiles to Emerald City. I think they mean miles. No, distance is measured in schmiles in Oz. How long are they? I don't know. Neither do I. But maybe that's because we don't have brains. You don't have a brain either? Nope. I used to have both, and believe me, the heart is more important. Why is that? The heart is the way to love. Love is happiness, and happiness is the best thing in the world. Well, how did you lose your heart in the first place? It's a long story. We like stories. <laughs> okay. I was a wood chopper, chopping trees and selling the wood for a living. Then I met a girl and we fell in love. I asked her to marry me and she said yes. I was so happy. Yay, what a happy ending. There's more. She lived with a selfish old woman who didn't want her to get married. She wanted the girl to stay and work for her forever. The woman went to the wicked witch and paid her to curse me. A curse? Oh no. What did the witch do? She took my leg. How was I supposed to work standing on just one leg? Oh my! I went to a tinsmith who made me a new leg made of tin. The old woman was very mad. She paid for another curse and this time I lost my other leg. The tin smith built me another leg of tin. Then what happened? Next, the witch cursed my arms and my head and all of me until I was a man made of tin. But the girl still loved me, and I loved her. The wicked witch did the worst thing she could possibly do. What? what? She cursed my heart. <coughs> the tinsmith didn't know how to make a new heart for me, and without a heart, I couldn't feel love. I've been sad and lonely ever since. What a sad story, I think. Maybe if I had a brain, I would have understood it better. We'll get you your heart. The wizard is wise and good, and he'll help all of us. I just know it. The gang continued toward the city of Emeralds, saddened by the Tin Woodman story. But soon, sadness gave way to scaredness. These woods are kind of scary. I wonder how many more smiles until we're out of here. We're safe. I have my oil can. The scarecrow can't feel anything. And you have the mark of the good witch and the magic slippers. But Toto, what's protecting him? We are. Ah, we are? <laughs> oh, Whew, that was a close one. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A big beast like you biting a poor little dog. I didn't bite him. No, but you tried to. You're nothing but a great big coward. I know, I'm sorry. Going after a scarecrow, a tin man, and a tiny dog. Ooh, scarecrow, that sounds scary. See, I'm the most cowardly coward who ever lived. It's okay to be scared sometimes, but you can't go around picking on smaller things just so you can feel brave. Where'd you get your courage? I don't know, I guess I've just naturally been tough. I wish I was tough. I've always been afraid of everything. Bears, spiders, kittens. Kittens? Who's afraid of kittens? Mice are, but I'm afraid of mice too. Hi, Vey. Let's go, guys. Wait, you're just gonna leave me here? Out in these scary woods all by myself? Let me come with ya. I'll protect ya. Oh, you will, will you? <laughs> I'm really sorry I scared you. It was a silly old thing to do, I know. I just wanted to look fearless. Oh, please tell Toto I'm sorry too. Wait, we're going to see the Wizard of Oz. I'm going to get a brain. And I'm getting a heart. Maybe the wizard could give you courage? Is the wizard very scary? Wait, never mind. I don't even care. I'll go ask the Wizard of Oz for courage. See, you're already a little braver. <laughs> What are you asking the wizard for? I just want to go home to Kansas. Is Kansas a scary place? Wait, wait, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Then let's go find that wizard. 
What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Lion, and Toto were officially off to see the wizard. The Scarecrow would ask for brains, the Tin Man for a heart, and the Lion would get some courage. And that is, if he could work up the nerve to ask. <laughs> and of course, Dorothy and Toto would ask the good wizard to get back home to Kansas. All they had to do was follow the road of yellow bricks. Uh-oh. Now why wouldn't they build a yellow brick bridge as well? It doesn't look so far. I could probably jump across. Well, look who's being brave. <laughs> I'd be way too scared to cross. Now why'd you have to go and say that? For a second I forgot I was a Frady Cat. You can do it, don't be scared. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. But you're gonna have to carry each of us across one at a time. You mean I have to do it more than once? Take me first. I'm made of straw, so if you drop me, I won't be hurt. All you have to do is stuff me back together. Good thinking. And I don't even have a brain. And me with no courage. What a team. Here we go. Wow, this is so fun. Woohoo, you did it. I knew you could. <laughs> the cowardly lion bravely carried across the others one by one. Oh, great work. <laughs> Now let's go meet the wizard! The gang marched forth and soon found themselves in a very dark and scary forest. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Nope, nope, not okay. What is that? Kalitas! What's a Kalita? A very scary creature. Well, you thought Toto was scary, so... <laughs> Kalitas have the body of a bear and the head of a tiger. Oh my! Uh, that is scary! Told ya! Oh, what are we gonna do? Run! That's way too far to jump across. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Hey, the Tin Man could cut down that tree and we could use it to walk across. Splendid idea. Okay, steady now. The Kalitas are coming! Oh, yay, we all made it! Kalitas! Ah! I've got it! Tin Man, chop this side of the tree! Ah! Phew, that was close! Great job, Tinny! <laughs> hey, it was the Scarecrow's idea! You sure you don't already have a brain in there? <laughs> Just straw, I'm sure of it. If you say so. You guys ready to hit the yellow brick road again? Just a second, my heart is racing. Ooh, can I listen? Wow, what a ticker. You'll get one soon. And I'll get my courage. And I'll get my brain. Let's go. It had been a long and scary journey so far, but they were determined to find the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Even if it meant they might run into the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 6. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and the Lion continued along the road of yellow bricks, anxious and excited to find the wizard. Look, a river. Oh, good. I sure am thirsty after all that jumping and running. Um, guys, how are we going to get across? Again? Okay, seriously, who designed this road? This is just poor planning. It's too wide for me to jump. It's too wide for the tree thing. Hey, what if I chop some wood and build a raft? Great idea! <laughs> the Tin Woodman got to work and soon built a perfectly seaworthy vessel. The gang hopped on and began to paddle toward the other shore. There she is, the brat who squished my sister. It's payback time, sweetheart. <sighs> Suddenly, the wind picked up and the river began rushing. Oh no, we're floating away from the yellow brick road. And straight for the land of the Wicked Witch of the West, the scariest witch of all. The witch? Oh no. What are we gonna do? Well, I can't swim, I'll fall apart. And I'll rest. Pedal harder! 
They all paddled as hard as they could, but the poor scarecrow got his paddle stuck in the mud, and the raft went rushing on down the river without him. Scarecrow! Dorothy! We'll come back for you, I promise! Well, here I am stuck on a pole again, and this time in the middle of a river. I guess I'll never get any brains. Maybe I can swim against the current. What about us? Grab a hold of my tail and I'll pull you to shore. Ah, there's a fish! It's just a tiny little goldfish. It touched me! Phew, we made it. But where are we? We're so far from the yellow brick road and our poor scarecrow. This is so sad. Don't cry, you'll rust. We'll just have to walk along the river until we find him. Dorothy, Toto, the lion, and the tin man walked along the river looking for their friend. <gasps> there he is! Shoo! Ah! Go away! Whew, that was a close one. Dorothy, you came back! Of course! We're here to save you! Okay, yeah, um, how are we gonna do that? There's no wood on this side of the river, so I can't build another raft! Lion, can you swim out there to rescue him? I'm so tired and weak from all the swimming. Plus, I'm scared of crows. A lion scared of a crow? That's silly. Ah, big stork! Our friend is out there stuck. We have to save him. He's coming with us to find the Wizard of Oz. This isn't the right road. You need the yellow one. We know, we just got a little off track. <laughs> but now we can't leave until we save the scarecrow. I can try to lift him. Mind you, I'm used to carrying babies, not straw people. He might be too heavy. Oh, he's very light. Okay. Oh no! Incoming! Oh shush. I'm here to save ya. Whoa! Hooray! Thank you so much! <laughs> no prob. Well, I better be on my way. Watch out for the Wicked Witch of the West. She's a tough nut. We will. See ya. <laughs> well, gang, shall we? Yup. I think the yellow brick road is just across this field of flowers. Ooh, poppies! They're so pretty. <laughs> yes, they are! And just wait until you smell them! The Wicked Witch of the West knew these poppies gave off a very powerful scent, one that would make even the largest beasts fall into a never-ending sleep. When you're asleep, I'll take back those sapphire slippers, and then you'll be powerless! I'm getting sleepy. <sighs> Me too. Sweet dreams! <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on! Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time! We really need to get back to the yellow brick road. But maybe just a little nappy wappy foist. Yeah, <sighs> nighty night. <laughs> That's right, go to sleep, Dorothy! Now, time for Mama to get some new shoes! <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Meow. Must be having a nightmare, scaredy cat. Okay, back to the shoes. Ha! They're mine! Wait a second. They're stuck! The witch pulled with all her might, but she could not remove the shoes. They must be protected by magic. Well, I also have magic. And my flying monkeys! The Wicked Witch of the West summoned her flying monkeys! Sup, boss? Take this girl to my castle! Aye, aye. <laughs> How is Dorothy gonna get home now? Sleep tight, boys! When you wake, your little friend Dorothy will be long gone! And the sapphire slippers will be mine! All mine! <laughs> Once the flying monkeys had carried Dorothy away from the poppies, the flower's power wore off and Dorothy woke up! This frightened the monkeys. And they promptly dropped Dorothy to the ground below. Ugh. Ow! Ugh. Okay, that was scary. But look, I'm back on the yellow brick road. But what about my friends? If I go back for them, the poppies will make me fall asleep forever. What to do? Dorothy thought and thought, but she couldn't come up with a solution. Until... Wait a second, these shoes are supposed to be magical, and the good witch supposedly blessed me with some kind of magic. I must be able to do something. Hmm. 
Dorothy tried to get her magic shoes to come up with something magic. She tapped them together. She tried doing a dance routine. She tried saying some magic sounding words. Ta-da! Abracadabra! Kazam! But nothing seemed to work. It's useless. What is? Who said that? I did, down here. That is amazing. Oh, hi. <laughs> you seemed upset just now. Anything I can do to help? I don't think so. My friends and I are supposed to go see the Wizard of Oz, but we fell asleep in that field of poppies over there. But then I woke up and these flying monkeys were carrying me away. I screamed and they dropped me. And here I am. Flying monkeys, eh? They work for the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh no. But it's a good thing you got out. The poppies are very dangerous. Your friends will sleep forever if we don't save them. But how do we do that? The other mice and I can go get them. We've lived here forever and the poppies don't bother us. But my friends are way too big for mice to carry. They may be too much for one mouse alone, but the whole crew, piece of cake. The mouse squeaked out a call to the other mice and soon there were hundreds of mice gathering around Dorothy. You wait here, we'll be back in a sec. And the mice scurried off into the field of poppies. Dorothy waited and soon she saw her friends, still in a deep sleep, being carried across the flowers. You should have warned us that one of your friends is a scary lion! Oh, he's not that scary at all. Watch! <laughs> Eek! Mouse! See? What's going on? We all fell asleep in the field of poppies, and then the wicked witch's flying monkeys took me. But then I fell down here, and these lovely mice helped save you. How kind! And look, we're so close to the Emerald City! Let's go! Bye-bye, mouse friends. Thanks again for helping us. Anytime. Goodbye. And once again, Dorothy and her friends were off to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 8, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy and the gang skipped along the yellow brick road, and before long, they saw it. <gasps> the Emerald City. Whoa. Let's go. Hello. Yes. We're here to see the wizard. And why, may I ask? Because I want a brain. And I a heart. I want courage. And I want to go home to Kansas. Hold, please. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, I see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, very well. OK, goodbye. The wizard will see you. Wonderful. Yes, he is. Right this way. Dorothy and the gang were led through the all-green, very sparkly, emerald-laden city. Wow! Pretty! I find this green very soothing. You first. Wish me luck. I hope they'll be okay. Hello? What do you want? Hi, sir. I want to ask you, please, if you will help me return home. Where is home? Kansas, sir. Oh, you don't say. Oh, have you been there? <clears throat> and why should I grant you this request? Because you're wonderful, and everyone says so. Even the good witch of the North said so. She did? <clears throat> I mean, how do you know her? Oh, I met her in the Munchkin Land. See, I landed in Oz rather accidentally. My house, it got swept up in a tornado, and I... It landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, and it squished her. Long story short, everybody told me to come here and that you could help me get home to Kansas. So, will you help me? You squish the Wicked Witch? Yes. I will help you get home. You will? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! But you must do something first. Anything. Your wish is my command. You must defeat the Wicked Witch of the West. Hold up, what? You squish the Wicked Witch of the East. Now go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. But I didn't mean to hurt the first witch. That was an accident. I couldn't hurt anyone on purpose. Not even a Wicked Witch. Then I cannot help you. Next. Dorothy was devastated. She went out to the others and tried to hide her disappointment. That is so sad. How did it go? It was interesting. Good luck in there, Scarecrow. But the Scarecrow went in and came out just as disappointed as Dorothy. Then the Tin Man, then the Lion. Turns out they all got the same answer. Unless they defeated the Wicked Witch of the West, the Wizard would not help them. 
I'll never get a brain. I'll never have a heart. I'll never get courage. And I'll never see Aunt Em or Uncle Henry or Kansas ever again. <laughs> What's wrong? The wizard told us he can't help us unless we go squish the wicked witch of the West. <laughs> Oof, scary. Well, good luck. Well, we're not gonna do it. Come on, guys. Let's go. Where to? I don't know. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch of the West? Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkeys swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around until he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo. What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys, fly! Uh-oh, kids, this does not look good. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The Wicked Witch of the West had ordered the flying monkeys to carry Dorothy and her friends to different locations. The Tin Man was to be put in the recycling bin, the Scarecrow pulled into pieces, and the Lion locked away and sold to the zoo. Dorothy's fate was to be delivered to the Witch's Castle, a visit she was not looking forward to. Hey, guys, how about just dropping me off here? I'll, I'll run along and I'll never bother the Wicked Witch again. No way. Yeah, sorry kid. You do not want to make the Wicked Witch angry. Yeah, I guess you're right. But the good news is, we won't hurt you. Okay, good to know. Thanks, but why? You wear the sapphire slippers. They're magic. Yeah, I heard that, but they haven't done anything magical so far. Well, you better watch out. The witch is definitely going to try to take those. The witch? Oh no. The flying monkeys were right. The Wicked Witch of the West wanted nothing more than to get those sapphire slippers from Dorothy. When she arrived at the witch's castle, Dorothy was forced to do chores. And all the while, the witch watched, just waiting to take the shoes. Gotta get those shoes. Don't you want to change before you sweep up all that garbage? You'll get your shoes dirty. I'm okay, thanks. Oh, that floor is going to get slippery. Don't you think you should wear some less slippery shoes? Get it? Because they're slippers? But seriously, get me the shoes! I got it. Good one. But no, I'm okay in these shoes. Geez, she really wants these shoes. And why is this castle so dirty? Ew. The witch waited and waited, but the only time Dorothy ever removed her slippers was when she took a bath. But the Wicked Witch was dreadfully afraid of water, so she never dare tried to steal them during bath time. I guess I'll just have to wait a little longer. Drat! Then one day, the witch's wait was finally over. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Dorothy was dusting a super high shelf when one of her slippers slipped right off. I got it! <laughs> it's mine! It's mine! Now give me the other one! Give me! No, you give me! You're powerless with only one shoe! So are you! Give it! No! Come on! Stop it! Ah! Now look what you've done! What's another mess? You make me clean all day anyway. Not that! I'm melting! Say what now? I'm melting! You melted me! You knew I couldn't touch water! I thought you were just afraid of it! Now you've destroyed me just like you destroyed my sister! You're a terrible girl! You're a bad, no good, stinking. Blah, 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 blah. But the witch melted before she could get out the last insult. Oh, I guess that's why she hated water. Who would have thunk it? Suddenly, Dorothy heard a familiar sound. It was a clanking of metal, a kind of swooshing sound, followed by a ferocious roar. Hey guys, how did you get here? I thought I'd never see you again. Wow, this is so fun. No time to explain now. We have to rescue you from the Wicked Witch. Come on. Thanks, but it's all good. She melted. <laughs> uh? oh? I'll explain later too. Let's go see the wizard. Oh yeah, now he'll grant our wishes. Hooray! Hooray! 
The gang set out on their journey back to the Emerald City. The Scarecrow would get his brains, the Tin Man would get his heart, the Cowardly Lion would get his courage, and Dorothy and Toto would finally go back home to Kansas. And when they arrived, the wizard did not seem happy to see them. What are you doing here? I told you not to come back until you destroyed the Wicked Witch. And we have your greatness. This is not a joke. I know, she's gone. Dorothy melted her. Accidentally, but yeah, she's gone. <laughs> so we've come back so you can grant our wishes. Let's keep reading. Oh, I forgot to say please. Please, sir. <laughs> I cannot grant your wishes. Now go away. Wait, what? What do you mean you can't grant our wishes? So I can't go home to Kansas? Well, I won't get a brain. I won't get a heart. I won't get any courage. This is baloney. You're supposed to be some wise and wonderful wizard. You're a charlatan, a humbug. Where are you? If you won't give me courage, then at least get some for yourself and come out and face us. Who are you? The wizard? What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on! Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So you're the mighty and wonderful Wizard of Oz? Well, I'm actually from Omaha, Nebraska. See, I landed here accidentally some years ago and I somehow convinced everyone that I was a wizard and well, here we are. So, you're not a wizard. So, you don't have any power? Um, no, not at all. Then we came all this way and did all of this for nothing? But you did destroy the Wicked Witch. That's a pretty big deal. How did you do it? Dorothy and the gang explained how it all went down. First, of course, they had been captured by the flying monkeys. The scarecrow had been pulled apart and scattered in a field. He lay in pieces when he suddenly had a bright idea. He knew that crows are pretty clever, so he called out and asked them to help put him back together, and they did. Once he was back to his old self, the scarecrow went to find the Tin Man. The Tin Man had been sold for scrap at a salvage yard and was feeling sadder than ever. But the scarecrow put him back together, polished him up, cause he had rusted quite a bit from crying. That is so sad. And they set off to find the lion. The lion had been locked up in a tiny cage and sold to the zoo. It was not a nice zoo at all. It was gloomy and full of terrible creatures like Kalinas. Remember those? Very scary. Not a good place for a lion with no courage. There, the scarecrow had another bright idea. He asked the Tin Man to use a bit of his metal to pick open the lock on the cage. And then the lion was free. It was time to save Dorothy. But first, the Tin Man stopped to unlock each and every cage because it made him too sad to see any creature locked up, even Kalita's. The Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion headed toward the Wicked Witch's castle. They were all very scared, especially when the flying monkeys saw them and swooped in. But the Lion put on his brave face and roared, making all the monkeys fly away shrieking. He was ready to take on the Wicked Witch too, but when they got inside the castle, they found Dorothy had already melted her. And so, there you have it. That's how we defeated the Wicked Witch. Too bad it was all for nothing. That's not true. You've saved everyone in Oz from the Wicked Witch. You'll be celebrated here forever, Dorothy. You'll be a star. That is amazing. But I just want to go home. And I want a brain. I want my heart. And I want my courage. Scarecrow, you already have brains. How else could you have figured out how to put yourself and the Tin Man back together? It was your idea how to pick the lock on the cage, too. Hey, yeah. Well, I guess it was. See? You've had brains the whole time. And you, Tin Man, you've shown you have a heart. You freed all the animals in the zoo. Well, they looked unhappy. I wanted to help. That's heart. And Lion, you showed bravery when you stormed the witch's castle. And you certainly seemed brave a moment ago when you were roaring at me. Oh yeah, sorry about that. No worries, but don't you guys see? You've had what you were looking for the whole time. But what about Dorothy? Hmm, Dorothy. Let's see what we can do. Hey, what about the magic shoes? Dorothy, can you use them to get home? Magic shoes? You've got the sapphire slippers? That makes you the most powerful person in Oz. Do you know how to use them? Mm, nope, no idea. 
I'll bet the good witch knows. Scarecrow, you're really on a roll here with all the brain stuff. That's a great idea. So the wizard sent out a call to the good witch of the north. Yay, magic to the rescue. Dorothy, my dear, how are you? I'm so glad you made it to the Emerald City to see the great and powerful wizard. Yeah, about that. We'll chat later, but now we need to get this girl home to Kansas. And we were thinking... Well, I was thinking, I do that now. Yes, the Scarecrow was thinking you would know how to use the magic of the Sapphire Slippers to get home. So do you? Oh yes, it's quite simple. Take three steps in the Sapphire Shoes and say your wish. And then I'll be home. And then you'll be home. What? It's that easy? <laughs> Wait! You have to say goodbye first! Oh, right. I almost forgot that I would never see you again. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't! You'll rust! Tin Man, I'll never forget how kind you are. You have a wonderful heart. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy! <laughs> Someone better get his oil can. Lion, you're braver and fiercer than any Kalita in the whole land of Oz. Thank you for protecting us on our journey. Oh shucks, Dorothy. I'll miss ya. I'll even miss your terrifying dog, Toto. Be nice, Toto. <laughs> Scarecrow, you've been with me the longest. I don't think we would have made it without your quick thinking. I think you're the real wizard here. Aw, oh, Dorothy, do you have to go? I do. I miss my family and my house and... Hey, wait a sec. My house is in Munchkinland. Huh. I wonder where Auntie M and Uncle Henry live now. Well, I better go. I love you guys, and I'll miss you. Come on, Toto. <gasps> we'll miss you. We love you. Bye, Dorothy. Dorothy took three steps and said, take me home to Kansas. And in a flash, Dorothy and Toto were back in Kansas. It was more colorful than she had remembered, but maybe that's just because Dorothy was so happy to be home. Hi kids, Miss Booksy here with a cool school exclusive. Today, I'm going to interview a real witch. <laughs> Super scary, huh? I mean, witches are always flying around on broomsticks and casting spells and being wicked, right? <laughs> well, we'll see. Help me welcome to the stage, the one, the only. Oh, I realize I don't know her real name, so come on out, witch! Hey, how are you? Happy to be here. Hi there, so what is your name? Alfred Boogers. Wow, that's beautiful. So tell me, how did you first become a witch? Were you born a witch? Did you go to a school for wizards and witchcraft? Ooh, do you play Quidditch? I was born into a family of witches. My mother was a witch, my mother's mother was a witch, and my mother's mother's mother was a witch. What about your mother's 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 mother? Was she a witch? No, she was an accountant. Oh, so what was your first spell? I turned the family cat into a chihuahua. What? I'm a dog person. Interesting. I always thought witches like cats. That's just a stereotype. Anyway, my spells got really good when I got my first bubbling cauldron. Ooh, tell me about that. What was the first thing you cooked up in your cauldron? First thing was chili. I make excellent chili, award-winning. Spicy but not too spicy, light on the beans. Oh, OK. But what kind of spells did you first cook up? Oh, right. Let's see. Uh, one time I put in the hair of a yeti, the fingernail of a meerkat, one lizard's tongue, a dash of cinnamon, and the eye of a newt. And what did that do? Made my entire kindergarten class levitate. You kids get back down here this minute or I'm calling the principal. That sounds fun. Want me to levitate you? Are you serious? Um, yes, please. <laughs> do you have a bubbling cauldron? I have a crock pot. Eh, it's okay. I can just use my wand. Abracadabra! Oh, this is so cool! <laughs> oh, hey, you have some schmutz on your hat. Oh, thanks. Hey, how do I get down? Hocus pocus. Ow! Whew. Sorry about that. The landing is the hottest part. <laughs> so, most people think of witches as wicked villains, but you actually weren't the bad guy in Snow White. Yeah, the evil queen was the villain there. I mean, her name is Evil Queen. What do you expect? Have you ever done anything truly wicked? Hmm. One time I cut the line at Disney World. For which ride? It was the line for the Bippity Boppity Boutique. Ooh, that is wicked. 
But I was such a cute princess. Fair enough. Everyone deserves a princess moment. Exactly. Just one more question before you go. Is it annoying when people dress up as witches for Halloween? Not at all. I love it. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, you know. Plus, I blend right in and go trick-or-treating. Witches love candy, by the way. You can quote me on that. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye.